Hi, I'm Sarita LaRoche, and today we're going to make some easy pearl cells. Hi, I'm Sarita LaRoche, and some of you have found my pearl pour recipe to be helpful. But today I would like to experiment with some different consistencies and some different pearl pour options. Now, if you'd like to see my original recipe, you can check right here, I think right here, <laughs> um, where I use Artist Loft Pouring Medium to help me get those pearls. But today I'd like to help Kimberly, who's a viewer who would like to experiment with metallic paints on their own. So I'm gonna pull out a few metallics and let's see what kind of pearls we can get using different additives, different consistencies. Let's go make a beautiful mess. So I have a little practice canvas here that actually has a little tear in it that we can play with. I pulled out a gold metallic from Soho. This is from uh, Jerry's Artorama. Then I pulled out a copper from PBO. And just to kind of play with the experiment, I pulled out an iridescent from PBO. So I'm going to mix these with Floetrol. I'm going to do it about a one to one ratio. And let's see what happens with that. All right, so now I'm going to make my dump paint. Kimberly was using white, so I have this Lucas white that I'm going to give a go. Let me just get some in there. I'm going to mix it with one part Floetrol and one part water. Now, Lucas tends to be a little bit thicker than um, some of my other paints, so I might end up adding a bit more water this is one of those things that you can't entirely teach. Uh, you have to kind of learn the feel. So I am going to put about one part Floetrol and it's fine if it's a tiny bit more. I don't weigh my paints or anything. My goal is to make this easy. Let's put one part of water. So this is gonna be thinner than this paint. This paint is just paint and Floetrol, and this is thinned down with water. All right, so I have three pearl color, uh, three, I mean, three colors for pearl paint. These are gonna be my pearl cells. We have this iridescent, we have this copper metallic, this gold metallic, and then I have white paint, much, much thinner, when it drips, you do not see a mound. It just disappears. Do you see how it just disappears? This one, if I drip it, it's going to see how it creates a little mound. I hope you can see this because I don't know what you're seeing. It creates a little mound before it disappears into the paint. So there's lots of ways we can put this onto the canvas. I am going to just dump. And the reason I'm going to dump is because we have the most chance of pearls appearing the thicker we have our pearl paint on the canvas. So Kimberly, maybe that could be part of the issue. You just need more volume of paint. Let's see. All right. Now I like to get multicolored pearls. So I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. I love the color of turquoise with copper. It has that aged copper feel to me. Some of my favorite pearl paintings, which are long gone and sold, were done in coppers and golds with uh, a varying shades of turquoise and kind of like minty greens. All right, so 
I don't know that this is going to do anything, but uh, I a lot of my painting is just therapy, makes me happy. So I am doing that to bring a little bit of mix to it. All right. So now I have my dump paint. What you want is enough paint that you can dump it over your pearl paint and stretch it over the canvas. So I hope that this little cup is enough. Let's find out. So I'm just going to go straight in here and then I'm going to stretch it and it all of this pearl paint is going to move as I'm stretching it. And hopefully we're going to see some cells. So let's make it happen. Dumping it and I'm going to stretch. The, the thinner white paint is going to move more easily than the thicker pearl paint. And I am a little bit thin on white paint. The only good thing about that is that if you have too much of your dump paint, it can be hard to get pearls. So um, I don't have too much and I didn't wear gloves. <laughs> so I'm gonna be nice and sticky. I can see some pearls starting to pop up right away. I see the copper, I see the turquoise. I'm gonna cover all of my empty spots. White paint does look different than the white gesso on the canvases. So I always cover the entire canvas with paint, including the sides, even if it's a white canvas and I'm using white paint. It just, it has a different um, overall effect. So I'm just touching that up. I am going to um, put you on time lapse because it is just more satisfying to watch the pearls popping on time lapse. Let's give it a go. Okay, I've let this develop for only about 15 minutes. You might have seen in the time lapse, I did hit it with the um, torch. I don't know because I stopped using a heat gun um, before I started doing pearl paintings. I don't know if a heat gun works as well as a torch to help those pearl cells develop. But what I really like about this particular recipe there is nothing in this recipe that needs to be cleaned, meaning there isn't any silicone oil, which I do use on occasion. Um, this will all dry flat and it will all be the same machine. So uh, if, if I want to use this and, and just looking at this painting, I can tell you I will see about fixing that canvas and um, painting something else with this because this makes a gorgeous background. I am going to go put this on a drying rack and let's start experimenting with some other recipes. All right, so for this next experiment, I thought we could use the same colors uh, just so we can, we can stick to the same, the same. Well, kind of, mostly the same colors. I'm, I'm lying a tiny bit. So I've got more of that gold from Soho. I've had good results with this house brand from Jerry's Artorama Soho. When they're on sale, I think these come out to be two bucks or 250. Well, the last time I bought them, everything, has, inflation has changed prices. But, um, you know, if you don't do this a lot and you don't need this size, this could be a better value for you over time, you know, because you can get more colors. So, okay, so gold, copper, this iridescent. I've had good luck with PBO brand across across the board. And I just thought for fun I'd add another PBO color. So that's why I said I'm I'm lying that I'm using the same exact colors. But this is free info, so sue me. <laughs> um okay, so we need Floetrol. In case I didn't say it before, we're talking US 
Floetrol, not the Australian version. And it would help if I could find my new bottle. I will come back. I need to find more Floetrol. I've decided I want to make a little bit extra of the copper color because I think I'm going to spread some copper along the edges just to bring some interest to the edges. So I'm mixing a little bit more. There we go. A little bit more copper in there. Mix up this, this green. It's an iridescent in case I didn't mention it before. So two iridescents, two metallics, and now I'm gonna mix up my dump paint. Now, instead of using white this time, I would like to use a little bit of this. I, last time I used Lucas, same, same company, Lucas White. I'm gonna use Lucas Indigo, which I'm almost out of it and I would just like to finish it off. So let me mix that up. All right, I made this a little bit too thin. So I'm gonna add a little bit more paint in there. Um, the thinner your dump paint is, the less is going to stay on the canvas. So if you really want very, very thin um, amount of like lines in between your cells, and you just pretty much want your cell, pearl cell colors to show, and not so much a dump color, then add more water. Um, but I like this color. I don't want it to just disappear. And yeah, I was very messy. <laughs> um, I love that I can be messy in this place. So yes. All right. So I have my copper and I am going to use that along my edges. I just love a copper edge. And also with the dump paint, it will react to the sides as well. It doesn't look so much like cells, it looks more like lacing on the sides just because of the way it drips. So let me go around here, around, around, around. I try to speed up the parts that you don't need to see, but it also means that I have to stop what I'm doing and hit the camera and sometimes my fingers are very, very messy. So I hope you will indulge me a moment to do the sides. Here we go. Now on the last one, I just dumped it in the center. I'm not gonna do that just for funsies. I'll do it a little bit different, but it, sh it doesn't change the basic chemical reactions that are happening. So I basically want a border of copper. So I'm building that up here. The border of copper. Like I said, I love to mix coppers and blues. And if you've watched my pearl pour videos, you've probably seen a lot of copper making its way in there. All right, so I've got copper along the edges. I'm gonna put a little in the center and I will put the other colors. Now in terms of like saving paint, this is not the technique for being very conservative with your paint. A lot of paint does go off the side, um, but the reaction is just really cool. All right, so I'm getting some of that in here. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, you can't really see it in the camera, but this iridescent has like little bits of pink and purple, depending on the direction that the light hits it. Now I got this, I'm gonna put it right in the center. Kind of like a bright spot in the center. And then just like the last one, it's gonna ooze out. So, once again, this is only water, water flow troll paint, 
and this is Floetrol and paint, and that's it. There's no other additives. So let's see what happens. Okay. Do do do. Do 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 do. And we're gonna do a little, little bit over here. Shoosh. A little bit over here. Whoosh. Trying to cover the entire canvas with that blue to make sure all of those pearl colors get a touch of that dump paint. In my um, my video that a lot of you like, I call it reactive and non-reactive paint. While I was searching for some vocabulary words to explain what's happening, the reactive paint being the paint that's on the bottom and the non-reactive paint being the paint that's on the top. The difference between the two is just that one, well in this case, one is metallic and one is not. And in the case of my recipe, one has artist left pouring medium, the other does not. So that, that thicker bottom paint, it reacts with that thinner top paint and breaks through. So let me heat this up. And then I will put you on time lapse and you can watch what happens with this one. We'll see if we get some nice pearls. All right, it's been about 15 minutes and you can see all of these lovely pearls that are popping. They will continue to pop, but I will be frank, I'm hungry and I'd like to have my phone while I go have my lunch. So I'm gonna let this continue to develop and we'll be back shortly. And here we have that first painting. It is the next day and uh, it's done making pearls. One of the things I love is that kind of halo that appears around the cells. So it's not just the, the solid color, there's kind of a halo of colors. And I really love those multicolored cells. So there's this one. You can see it worked very well to use just metallic paints mixed with Floetrol, one to one ratio, and then covered with a thin dump paint of acrylic to paint, water, and Floetrol. So here is this one. It's 24 hours later. You can see some of the pearls, you know, as they were dripping, they got stretched, but many of them kept their nice round look. Let me show you the edges here. Uh, all right, so this was, again, just Floetrol and acrylic paint for the pearl cells. So I hope that helps as you're experimenting yourself. And Kimberly, thank you for your question. Keep making a beautiful mess.